welcome to the workshop. Hi, I've had a couple of requests uh, following my video on the engineer's tri-square, which you can find here. People have said, if it's not accurate, what can I do to put it right? So I'm going to attempt to show you here using one of mine. Now my tri-squares are accurate so you'll have to bear with me and there'll be a little bit of adjustment to show you what could possibly be wrong with yours. First of all I need a straight edge on a piece of board. This is a piece of MDF, this is a straight edge. And the first thing I'm going to do to that is take a marking gauge I've set about 3 16 quarter of an inch, uh, 5 mil, not really important, but mark a, a line parallel with the edge. And just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to show you roughly where that is with the pencil. I hope you can see that. The next thing is to check the square. Checking the square is shown in the, the other video, so I'm not going to cover it in too much detail here. And in fact, I'm going to fake a square which is inaccurate. Now, to do that, uh, first of all, I'm going to pretend it's less than 90 degrees. And to do that, I'll just put uh, the edge of my rule under this end here. So I hope you can see you're now measuring less than 90 from the straight edge to the blade. And then I mark a, a, a line across my initial line parallel to the edge and a line towards the top of the blade. And if I was doing this for real I'd be using a knife so I will knife a little line there and knife a line across here then I'd flip the square over again it's going to have the same inaccuracy knife goes in the knife line remove the square up to it so we're in the same place again and mark at the top of the blade and that shows you the inaccuracy and again I would do that with a knife so over three quarters of the length of that blade we're out by approximately two millimeters Now to find what is exactly 90 degrees, we can either split this gap between these two lines, which would be accurate enough for most purposes, but if you want to establish 90 degrees from scratch, you need a pair of compasses. If we take a pair of compasses, and in fact again I, I would probably prefer to use dividers and uh, scribe the line but you wouldn't be able to see that I don't think very clearly so I'll use ordinary compass compasses now I want to put the pivot point for the compass the pin where my mark crosses the parallel line and then mark off a couple of arcs along that line and extend the compasses in length or radius pivot from the where the arc crosses the parallel line And again from the other one, now 
and where they cross will give us a reference point from the initial pivot point that's 90 degrees. So if we join up, we'll put our knife back in here at the beginning and line up the centre of that, the arcs crossing and I'm going to knife a line because that's better for me and for you I'm going to use a pencil and put that pencil line in and as you can see that divides the initial two lines we got so we have a reference now which is at 90 degrees that's what we can test the square against as we make adjustments to it and again I'll use the little rule so that my square is out like it was before move it up to the, the start point you can see how it runs out away from the, the accurate line and at a distance of perhaps three quarters of its length it's out by about a millimetre and to make that 90 degrees that means we'll need to remove a millimetre from the stock end of the blade and so we could mark a little under a millimetre at this end of the blade now we need to also bear in mind that we use sometimes the inside of the square so once again knife on the starting point move the inside of the square up to there I'll just put my discrepancy in again and you'll see in this instance we can't see the line so what do we do? well we can move the square across until we just see the tip of the line at the end and we can measure at this end and it's again it's roughly a millimetre which it should be because the blade should be parallel and that tells us that we need to remove about a millimetre from the inside of the blade at this end, at the far end and nothing from right up in the corner and the way we do that is by using sandpaper two things to, to bear in mind here we want to maintain a straight edge for the entire length of the blade both the external side and the internal side and we want to maintain parallel between the two edges in fact the third thing is the edges on these are usually quite wide we want to maintain those at 90 degrees to the face of the blade we're at the sharpening station now and we're going to set this tri-square accurately we've determined that we need to remove a millimetre of material on the outside of the stock up near the corner and nothing at that end on the inside nothing at this end and a millimetre from this end and we set up a flat piece of granite here and because my tri square is accurate I don't want to grind anything off it I just put a piece of paper down here you would have a piece of sandpaper here depending on how much metal you need to remove you could start with a coarser grade and work down to something very fine, a bit of wet and dry paper eventually so you stick that on across a fair amount of the stone and then you can holding it upright put a lot of pressure on the end that you want to remove the material from and just a little bit of pressure on the end that you don't want to remove the material from and work it backwards and forwards try to maintain it upright so that your edge remains at 90 degrees to the faces of the blade 
Now I came up with a little jig to help you do that. It's just two parallel pieces of wood with square edges screwed together with about an inch overlap on the side. Put the bottom piece off the sandpaper, the top piece hanging over the sandpaper. We can clamp with our thumb the blade against that edge which holds it upright 90 degrees to the stone and we can work backwards and forwards applying pressure either at the stock end or the front end and light pressure at the other end move backwards and forwards and that will maintain a 90 degree edge on your blade and you just work away putting most of the pressure on the end that you need to remove material from and checking occasionally that you are keeping it straight until you approach your mark as you get close to your mark go back recheck as in the other video and creep up on an exact 90 degrees for the inside edge that's a little more tricky because the stock gets in the way I suggest if you're removing a lot of material from the end away from the stock as we would be with this example you can work off the edge of the stone so with very light pressure near the stock you're not going to create too much of a deviation at this end so we can get most of the stock removal most of the metal removal done in this way and once most of it has gone work at the end of the stone using the little jig again to make, maintain 90 degrees and you can finish right up to the stock this time keep checking for flat and keep checking back at the square edge that you're getting 90 degrees and then finally I just like to take on a very fine wet and dry paper just one little pass on each corner to take the very sharp edge off you won't remove enough material to, take, to make an inaccuracy when you're marking out but you might just save yourself a few cuts and that's all there is to it I'll just show you the jig up close it's very simple I've got two pieces this is Iroco which is good if it gets wet it'll be fine parallel and square just screwed together in this case you can glue them obviously and with enough hangover so that you can work comfortably on the sandpaper and you can change where you're working on the sandpaper and use a good inch of it in this case as you work backwards and forwards coming close to the sandpaper then away from it close into it and away make use of all the, the sandpaper so it's a very simple jig well worth making also very handy when you're preparing the edges of cabinet scrapers you want those at 90 degrees to the faces just clamp against the side run it backwards and forwards 